Live from Dr. Pink Field in Frisco, Texas, USA Ultimate is proud to present the 2014 USA Ultimate National Championship in this mixed final between Seattle Mixed and Minneapolis Dragon Thrust. Look at our bracket, how we got here. Dragon Thrust knocking off the Chad Larson experience yesterday. Seattle Mixed, a 15-12 win in their semifinal over Boston Wildcard. Alongside the voice of Ultimate, Evan Leffler, I'm Wayne Randazzo. Evan, it's Championship Sunday. Yeah, it's exciting, and the mixed division has really been dramatic. Of course, you have the defending champs, the world champs from Minneapolis, Drag and Thrust. You also have this team from Seattle. They're a complete unknown in their first ever trip to nationals. And this is a team, a collection of talent. They basically have a core 10, and they brought in a bunch of other players from the Seattle youth scene. Mark Burton, a former Sockeye star, he's done something that's been really impressive. He's led the team in goals, and he's led the team in assists, and he's also brought a mentality of confidence to make them believe that they can actually win a national title in their first trip to nationals. And Dragon Thrust, they've won a national title before. They even won a world championship just a couple of months ago. Yeah, this Minneapolis team certainly doesn't know very much about its opponent, but it still comes in with a lot of confidence. Jake Henderson, the coach, instills that confidence, and they are just talented up and down the roster. We saw yesterday in the semifinals against their regional rival, CLX, calm offense took care of business. They were able to make things happen underneath, but when game was on the line, they often looked deep. Austin Lean, their top handler, has led the team in assists all weekend long. He also did some things deep. That was Jay Drescher going deep. But Lean is the guy who's sort of the, the pillar of the backfield offensively. 19 assists over the course of the week. He'll distribute, but if you guard him too tight underneath, he can burn you deep as he's warming up there to do. And away we go, the first of our three championship games, the mixed final coming up next. Seattle and Minneapolis, the opening pull coming up. The 2014 USA Ultimate Championships are brought to you by Discraft Ultrastar, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Ask your retailer today about Discraft Ultrastar. The Triple Crown Tour, America's most competitive and prestigious series of Ultimate tournaments. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body of the sport of Ultimate in the United States. To learn more about USA Ultimate or to find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. It is a beautiful day here in Frisco, Texas for this championship Sunday as we take a look at the Seattle Mixed lineup. Cameron Bailey, Kai Yi Fong, Drew Johnson, and Deborah Barker Lee, their cutters, Mark Burton, Lucy Williams, Phil Pohl, the handlers for Seattle Mixed. Dragon Thrust, Patty King, James Haran, Mike Clark, Sarah Mextra, with Erica Bacon, Jake McCain, and Austin Lean doing the handling for Jake Henderson's team. This seemingly unbeatable Dragon Thrust squad on a beautiful day. 64 degrees, east southeast winds at 15 miles per hour. Humidity very low today. It is picture perfect here in the Dallas suburbs. Frisco, Texas. A beautiful day at Dr. Pinkfield as Jay Drescher holds the disc ready to start in this mixed final here today. Dragon Thrust against this relatively unknown Seattle club. And Evan, where's the advantage? Is it to Dragon Thrust, the perennial contender, or is it to Seattle, the team that people don't know much about? I think Dragon Thrust you know, has got to be considered the favorite coming in. They've been in this spot before. They've been in a world championship final just a few months ago. They know what the pressure is like in this situation. But, you know, the Seattle mixed team cannot be overlooked. They play a very unorthodox style that I'm excited for fans to see. They like to stretch the field at all times, but they also will play some of that sockeye small ball, moving the disc east-west. A lot of scoobers, a lot of hammers, some lefties. Again, these guys love playing mini, and Cameron Bailey made a throw yesterday from the seat of his pants with his opposite hand for the score, and right off the bat, they shoot it deep, looking for Mark Burton, and he makes a great sky. A foul was called. Jay Drescher there defending. This is going to be a great matchup. Great catch there by Mark Burton going up over Jay Drescher. That's certainly a matchup to watch. But you mentioned in the open how Burton leads the team in goals and assists in this tournament. How's that even possible? He's involved in everything. You know, basically every time they score, he's involved.
Baldy Kwong, our head observer, Hank Carey, Josh Cooper, and Laura Meyer. These orange-shirted observers here today. This mixed championship game, national championship on the line. And Seattle mixed is on the board first as that goal does count after the big catch to Mark Burton. It's finished off by Phil Cole and Seattle with a 1-0 lead. One of the things that the Seattle folks told me is they love when the X's and O's break down. Because when you're playing mini, you don't have a ton of set plays. It's about throwing to space and making acrobatic catches. The three keys for Seattle mixed, time, space, and mind. Time talking about tempo. They want to control the pace. Space, the middle of the field. They want to control that middle portion of the field. And then in terms of mind, having composure and how they react to adversity, which will arrive at some point when you're facing a team the caliber of Dragon Thrust. Seven players on each side, first team to 15 wins. When we get to eight, it's halftime. Disc can go anywhere, you can't run with it. You have 10 seconds to pass in a self-officiated game, largely self-officiated game. Those observers will get involved as Seattle Mixed is on the board first, and they will pull to Dragon Thrust. You know, a, a name that a lot of people probably know who followed Ultimate for a while is Jamie Arambula. Won two titles with Sockeye in the mid-2000s. Mark Burton, the captain, says he's the voice of the team. They don't technically have a coach. Jamie Arambula, 36 years old, coming off an injury, may play a few points, but he is the guy who's, you know, the emotional fulcrum of this team on the sidelines and trying to keep everybody calm. He told me that you know, he's worked with a lot of great ultimate coaches, Ben Wiggins, Gwen Ambler, Matty Singh, and his goal is to try to say the right thing at the right time to make the players ready to go. And you think that's what coaching is, much more than X's and O's. It's about saying that right thing to get people mentally ready to go. And Dragon Thrust with the first turnover. This is Khalif El Salam with the disc. Numerous people have said that he's a human highlight reel. Remember the U23 throw. World Games team. Down in the end zone, that turns it back to Dragon Thrust. So Seattle mixed, unable to take advantage as you see there, Austin Lean just kicked the pylon away and now he cuts it deep, looking for James Horan on a coast-to-coast -coast throw all the way into the end zone. From one side of the field to the other, lead to Horan and Dragon Thrust on the board. Very familiar duo for people who follow the mixed game. Lean to Horan, the co-captain connection. That's a 70-yard throw. A lot of guys have that throw. Perfect float, perfect rotation. Nice angle of the disc, guaranteeing Ron a chance to run it down. And when he's got a couple steps on his defender, I mean, he's got such wide shoulders. James Ron is so difficult to get around. James Ron, a really fascinating player comes from a football background. Got cut from the Wisconsin Eau Claire college football team. Also played basketball, tennis. But you know, from basketball and football, he's learned about body positioning downfield. And with a 70 yard field, 40 yards wide, he is as large of a target as you'll find in the game. And it's not just, he's, he's not just a big oaf out there. He's got great athleticism and awareness too. Dragon thrust on the board, now Seattle mixed, will get it back. And they turn it over immediately. On a low throw that went behind the intended target, Cole Johnson. Dragon thrust has a chance in Seattle territory to take the lead. Really just an unforced error. Yesterday we didn't see any turns for the first you know, six, seven points in the mixed semifinal. There wasn't a break until the 12th point. Dragon and CLX, but here on the verge of a break. Got Swing it. it to Jay Drescher for the score. You know, if, if it's Lean and Horan on the O-line, Jay Drescher is the number one threat 
to Seattle mixed on the Dragon for a D line. Yeah, just a, a lazy mistake from the Seattle team and Dragons, a squad that will make you pay for those mistakes. They'll really punish you. Dragon Thrust has great confidence in its female players. You're not gonna win a mixed title without a strong female core. You know, there are a lot of teams that have strong female cores and a not as strong men's core. Probably more teams that rely on their men more than their women. This Dragon Thrust team has an incredible cohesiveness in between Sarah Mextroth and Jamie Glader, Emily Regan, Erica Bacon, Patty King, Anna Hetler. Just to name a few. Jay Drescher looks an awful lot like that dragon on the front of his jersey, especially <laughs> when he's getting down there and playing defense or going after a disc on offense. He's really a great two-way player. And he actually also breathes fire he seems on the to. field. He seems to. Dragon Thrust 3-0 in Pool B. The win yesterday over the Chad Larson experience in the semifinals. They beat Blackbird in the quarterfinal round, which was a big win. This is a team that's battle-tested in championship play. And as they try to win the national championship today, feeling good about themselves now after back-to-back -back points. Seattle Mix scored on their first possession, but a key turnover on their second. Now they tap it back in, trailing. And now another turnover, Drew Johnson's pass. Too wide for Deborah Parker Lee. And here's where you might be seeing some early jitters from the Seattle team. You know, they, they've had to convince themselves that they deserve to be here. Because I think their goal for the season was just to make nationals. And then they got here and they basically said, well, well, let's win a pre-quarters game. And all of a sudden they're here in the finals. And, you know, the logistics of that are, are pretty crazy. You know, this is a team that had never gone to nationals before. Now they're going to the U.S. Open next July. They're going to the pro flight finale. I mean, all these commitments for next year come with making it to this stage here in Frisco today. You know, yesterday, only one mixed semifinal was on TV. They were back on the other fields where the first rounds were. Does it change having to come over here on the main field and playing in front of the cameras? I think this whole experience is something that they're still learning how to adjust to. You know, Jamie Arambula has been on this stage. Mark Burton has been on this stage. Drew Johnson. Khalif El Salam to some extent, but the vast majority of the Seattle mixed players have never before been in a game like this. And they're gonna need to perhaps take a timeout and talk it over and refresh and restart because Dragon Thrust making quick work off the turn. Sarah Ancio gets the goal here. And a pretty pass from Jay Drescher to set it up. True assist goes to Mike Peterson, but this flip to Peterson on the sideline is what set up the throw. And Peterson zinging in to Ancio. You talked about the hockey assist. That would yep. have been one where Drescher would have been included. Yeah, no question. He gets credit for the hockey assist. And, you know, everybody on this line, Mextroth, it looked like near the back of the end zone, did a nice job clearing out far side of the field. He went toward the middle to get back in the stack, and that... Cleared the space for Ancio to make the catch in the end zone. Dragon Thrust team, the first time ever, went to Worlds after finally getting past the semifinals for the first time last year. Coach Jake Henderson said pretty much everybody on the team who went to Worlds took some time to travel other parts of Italy, going through Europe. The, the World Championship experience is an amazing one. From talking to, about it with so many different people who were there, I understand that there were numerous logistical difficulties in Lecco, but aside from some waiting around and you know, not being enough food at the fields for the players, for the most part, everybody who went to that tournament just cherished the opportunity to have the culture exchange and play teams from all around the world. And you know, there's a very different atmosphere, worlds compared to nationals. Mark Burton on the huck, going deep for Phil Paul, and Paul's able to track it down near the goal line. Paul takes Phil a Paul. timeout. Yep, called a timeout. 
He had two per half. Paul, 32 years old. He's one of the founders of the Seattle mixed team. An offensive handler making a cut from the backfield and beating Jeff Trosvig to the brink of the end zone. Great throw by Burt. A backhand toss. Phil Paul was able to track down. So now Seattle mixed two and one in pool A. Their loss was their first game against the Polar Bears. They've rattled off five straight since then. They beat Portland administrators in the free quarters. Santa Maria from Columbus in the quarterfinals. The Boston Wild card yesterday. Columbus team featured all the Ohio State ladies, the national champs from the Buckeyes. And then that Boston Wild card team was in the semifinals last year, played in the World Championships in Lecco. So those are two impressive wins. Now this Seattle mixed team, maybe first appearance even in this tournament, let alone to make it to the finals. And Mark, Mark, to Mark, Mark Burton told me, we're just a bunch of scrubs that play mini. I mean, that's how he described himself. Two on two, three on three. He says that's how, and, and a lot of their smaller pods in the team, they develop chemistry. Only five or six people on the team have ever been to nationals. And sort of that core of a half dozen players with the experience, when they did qualify out of the Northwest region, sent a bunch of emails, talked about how to prepare and capitalizing out of the timeout. Mark Burton, again, makes the play in the end zone off a little quick flip. So Seattle back on the board, breaking that string of three straight points from Dragon Thrust. The vertical stack in the end zone, Burton broke out first. And the flip from Phil Paul to make it a 3-2 contest. Now on the official roster, Mark Burton's hometown listed as Belfast, Ireland. Spent about six and a half years of his life there. His mother was from there. His father was doing his PhD there. He lived there from about 10 months old to when he was seven. He still goes back often. Actually took the Seattle mix team to some fun tournaments in Ireland through the years. You know, it's an interesting story because he was, you know, a solid player on the Sockeye team that went to the finals last year. And I asked him what, what was the reasoning behind playing for Seattle Mix this year rather than Sockeye. And he basically said, you know, there, there were a few different reasons. One of it was financial, you know, the, the, the commitment to go to Worlds and the commitment to go to the U.S. Open. That was gonna, gonna be a financial cost. And then I reminded him that, well, he has to go to the U.S. Open next year. He has to go to the Pro Flight Finale next year. But uh, I don't think he's complaining about those obligations at the moment. Certainly not thinking too much about it, thinking about how to combat this drag and thrust O-line. Dave Klink sinks it into the middle of the field. Mike Clark, who caught that one. Mike Clark had a big game yesterday in the mixed semifinal. And they threw it to him a lot. Ron with a scuba bluff. Swings it back instead. Evan Klein, who's their Seattle's biggest defender in the air is trying to match up with Fraun. Austin Lean brought it back into the backfield. Now slings it to the sideline too far. As his intended target, Anna Hetler laid out but couldn't grab it. So now Seattle a chance to tie. Looking for El Salam. Oh, and it's defended well by Dragon. Denied by Mike Clark in the end zone. Haven't seen El Salam get the ball as much yet. Chance here, but that one kind of flattened out. Well, he didn't get enough on the throw. So El Salam wasn't even that open, but this is the, the chap. They, they want to go 50-50 disc to El Salam. And the young up-and-coming prospects in the game plays for the Washington Sun Dodgers. Seattle and Minneapolis in this mixed final. Later today in the women's, San Francisco and DC, in the men's, Denver and Boston. It's the first time in 11 years that the six finalists have come from six different cities. And typically you've seen multiple teams from San Francisco, multiple teams from Seattle, multiple teams from Boston too, but there's certainly a lot of surprises 
across the board, especially in the men's division with the top three seeds. Revolver, Machine, and Sakai all failing to make it to the semis. Seattle and Minneapolis here. We'll see San Francisco in the women's final. Men's final, Denver and Boston. You good? You good? Go on, have that round. Go. Take a look at sports non-contact rules. No physical contact allowed. You'll see a lot of fouls because of that. Because you have to guard so closely. There's no way to avoid contact. Good backhand fake. Now Austin Lean, the leading handler for this Dragon Thrust team. Scoops it out to the other side. I think it's an underrated aspect in both basketball and ultimate, the pass fake. In basketball, you're playing against a zone defense. You can completely change the complexion of the zone defense just by faking a pass to the left. And it's the same thing in ultimate. Young players need to pivot, and you need to fake throws, even if it's not a realistic throw, even if you don't have that throw. You fake it, it opens up everything else. And now it's Austin Lean in the end zone, one of the top handlers for Dragon Thrust. Doesn't get many goals, but on the board here. Lean picked up his 20th assist of the tournament on the first point on the Huck to Hron. Third in the tournament in assists. And you said it, he typically doesn't get a lot of goals, but just a smooth up line cut and fan the defender, lost him. Dragon Thrust now two for two in break chances. Seattle has had two break chances, but 0 for two. That's why Minneapolis has the, the early advantage. Goal and an assist for Lean early on today. Busy in this first half. Again, first team to eight. Sends this game to halftime as Minneapolis tries to win its second straight national championship. Seattle mixed really on the national stage for the very first time. Made it all the way to this final round. Trying to win a championship for the very first time. They're trying to make a, a similar run to what the Polar Bears did a few years back. Greg Marliov and Anchi So put together that team for layout. They had fun playing together, so let's play in the series. Ended up winning a national title, which which really gives me hope because you know in, in anybody should realize that you put together a team, you love ultimate, you're passionate about it, you develop chemistry. Anybody is eligible to enter into the USA Ultimate Series. Wait, you and I can start a team next year. I'm waiting for you to make your comeback. Comeback is a misleading term. <laughs> the start. And through the hands of Jake McCain as Dragon Thrust turns it over. The disc just rolled all the way to midfield. That's what they like to do, shooting it deep immediately off the turn. And Phil Paul, after a deflection, hauls it in. That was an interesting point for Seattle, but there might not even be a point for now because they might call it back. Burton and Hemish discussing, and it will be a goal. So the goal stands for Phil Paul. I don't think I've ever seen a disc that rolled so far to one direction. One of the Dragon Thrust players had to dive. Here's the dive to keep it from rolling. The thing was just rolling. It was Hemish who finally stopped it. It could have rolled all the way to the end zone. You see that sometimes on a, on a roller pull where someone will lay out forward to knock down the disc to save yardage. The very next play was Phil Paul going up for that jump disc. And Seattle back with it one, two goals and an assist. Paul's been involved in everything that Seattle's done so far. Seattle team is an interesting group. A team that's kind of been mashed together that kind of plays a much looser style. Yeah, well, they, they consider themselves to be a core 10. And basically, you know, this spring, they were in a bar and a brewery and 
Seattle talking about how they really believe they could bring people together to, to battle to be a Nationals contender. And, you know, one person said, oh, I think I could get this person to play with us. And another said, oh, th this person would be good. And, you know, that's how a lot of good teams come together. Previous relationships, whether they're college relationships or, you know, rec, rec league relationships or mini relationships. Austin Lean sends it back. Dragon thrust. The defending national champs. Facing a team that they kind of were last year. A team on the rise. A team trying to make their claim on the national level. Down Dragon Thrust, the established authority in ultimate mixed. And that one might be a penalty on the end zone. Looked like Ron stopped rotation of the disc. It's and a Klein that broke it up. Stop rotation, then the disc was knocked out of his hands. And Dragon Thrust gets credit for a goal. With that foul occurring in the end zone, they ruled that a catch would have been made if it weren't for Klein committing a foul. So they just give Dragon Thrust the point. And again, first team to eight sends it to halftime. So a 5 3 lead right now for Minneapolis. Second trip to the end zone for James Ron. His first year as a captain, he said he probably wouldn't want to be a captain if not for Jake Henderson. And the, the, the coach takes a lot of responsibilities off the captain's shoulders. And especially on game day, it just lets James be a player and doesn't ask him to worry about the strategy or the administrative stuff or calling lines. Jake okay, Henderson, the coach of Dragon Thrust, a former player. He's dealt with four ACL surgeries, three on one leg, one on the other. And the doctor basically told him, if you want to carry your kids around one day, stop playing ultimate. And he listened. Pat Niles, who's out of commission right now for Dragon Thrust, tore his ACL, just his first ACL tear in a practice, non-contact injury shortly after pro flight. But Jay Drescher just whipped the pull out of bounds. Didn't even make it to the brick mark. And uh, Pat Niles has a great mentor in how to recover from ACL surgery in Jake Henderson, who's done it uh, four times. Pat Niles told me that he hopes to be back 100% by the spring. There's a six month recovery, so by the US Open, he should be good to go. Seattle up near midfield after that short pull by Drescher. Already in the Dragon Thrust territory as Drew Johnson pushes it ahead. Kick was called, so they stop for the moment. Ai Yi Fong faking the backhand. Now we'll dump it into the middle of the field. It's Drew Johnson. Contact near the goal line there as Drescher has to breathe some fire down the neck of Mark Burton. So is the foul contest? Okay. That's a great matchup. Those two guys are just spark plugs for their team. Johnson swings it out. Red zone chance for Seattle mixed. Looking for the edge. As Fong looks to dump it in. Sends it back instead. That's Cameron Bailey. Pick was called as Bailey sits about 10 yards from the goal line. Big point here for Seattle mixed. Good crowds already filed in today as Seattle can't score. A low throw in the end zone. And now a huck on the other side. Looking deep for Brian Schoenrock. He's got it. Dumps it back to Hamish. Hamish with the hammer throw to the end zone, and there's showing Rock for the point. Oh 
Joshua. Josh Hemis drops the hammer. That was a beautiful throw. Notice that the defender, Cameron Bailey, was overplaying to the open side. So he went over the top where there was tons of space. Strings, Brian Schoenrock knows that Hemish has that throw. That's what you learn from playing together. And I'm sure they made just very brief eye contact, just a slight tilt to the head from Josh Hemish. Slight tilt to his left, says, be ready for it, raises his arm, and by that moment, Strings knew exactly what was coming. Dragon Thrust has doubled up on Seattle mixed early. What have you seen from this Seattle club that has hindered them early? Well, they made a few unforced turnovers. And they have not capitalized on their break chances. I think Dragon Thrust now three for three in break chances. Seattle 0 for two. You know, Seattle has forced some turnovers. The defensive line has gotten some stops. But they just haven't been as careful and precise with the disc. They're fun to watch, though. I mean, they probably could afford to take a little more patience, but it's their style. After the turnovers, we saw them. They just get it and chuck it. So now Seattle Mix needs a point. Cameron Bailey. Swings it to the center. They move it out to the near side. Burton, Burton wants sits another. it deep. Sailing back. And incomplete to Drew Johnson. Now when someone like Mark Burton leads his team in goals and assists, probably is also going to lead him in turnovers. It's just a byproduct of the high usage rate. What's well, amazing that even in this situation, something we haven't really seen this weekend, a team down by this much, taking a chance like that. That's the style of Seattle mixed. Mark Burton told me, I, I don't think any other team is like us. That's a flick hook intended for Schoenrock, who goes up and makes the catch. Schoenrock is all legs at 6-1. At the top of his leap, he gives Dragon Thrust a four-goal lead. Well, last year, it was Jeff Trosvig who was the difference maker with that big flick. Trosvig had a relatively quiet semifinals. He was injured earlier this year, but a very dangerous thrower on the Dragon Thrust D-line. And Schoenrock, again, rising up. Timeout, Seattle. They've now used both of their timeouts in this first half. Looks like Burton did get a little piece of it, but not enough to take it away from Schoenrock and the scutsy style of Seattle mix that has largely led them to this championship game has hurt them early against a Dragon Thrust team that's trying to repeat like Blackbird did in 2011 and 12. Minneapolis breaking that San Francisco string. We've talked about the women's final, how Fury won seven straight years until DC Scandal beat them last year. They'll rematch in the women's championship game later. But it seems like that West Coast dynasty, those West Coast teams that own this sport, specifically in San Francisco, revolvers out. It seems like that's starting to become much more of a nationwide thing. Anybody can win anywhere. Yeah, it's a byproduct of the stronger youth scenes in other areas of the country. You know, Atlanta and Boston have always had strong youth scenes, but you're starting to see more in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, North Carolina. Nashville, Tennessee is a pretty strong youth scene. And I think it, you know, it really comes down to exposure, you know. The, the tenets of spirit of the game, self-officiation, resolving your own disputes. The fact that making a layout grab is just so much gosh darn fun. Jay Drescher will pull. Dragon Thrust sitting pretty as they try to win their second straight national championship. Quite a 2014 for them already with being world champions. 
Good redemption pull there from Drescher. A big point here for Seattle mixed. And they all lost it. Drescher came in to knock it out. But Burton will call a foul here. And it certainly was contact. It looked to me like Drescher got there first and seeing it live, but oh, it's a foul. Yeah, not even much debate, really. Drescher interrupted that play, and now they're taking another chance. This one connects near the red zone. Drew Johnson with a chance for the point. Nice put. Throws it to the sideline of the end zone, where able to go up and get it is Phil Pohl. His third goal already today. And mixed, needed that one. Drew Johnson, a cutter on the offensive line, works really well in the Seattle mix fast paced system. Young gal played for Riot last year. Phil Paul certainly with great size, six foot five. Played college ultimate at Central Washington. Even at 32 years old, he can still go up high. Johnson with her 12th assist of the tournament, second only to Burton on the team. Three goals, and Paul's assisted the other goal for Seattle Mix. Now a 7-4 Dragon Thrust lead. Paul on a Kent Washington. A lot of local kids on this Seattle Mix squad. Paul went to Central Washington University. Now halftime point for Dragon Thrust. Able to make that catch on the ground was Patty King. So now Seattle Mix can pull within two. If Seattle Mix can get this point. Suddenly things look a lot different. Yeah, this is a big break chance here. Up wide, up wide. Around to work. Towards your heart. Henry Fan. Controlling the disc here. A red zone chance for Seattle. They send it out to the end zone, a jump disc. That was. Not, really the not the best up, throw in the not world. Not the matchup they wanted. James Braun's going to own that territory. Even over Khalif El Salam. And now Braun going for the deep pass. Nobody home. Braun's eyes a little bit larger than his flick right there. <laughs> Seems like Seattle's lulled Dragon Thrust into their own game. Dragon Thrust has taken some unnecessary chances in this first half. I mean, that's one of the underrated things about Ultimate. It, it, it's a real challenge to grind out every point. You know, just to take those dumps and swings and 10 yard under and dumps and swings. Most of these players can throw the disc from end zone to end zone. So it's really tempting, especially when you see one of your teammates streaking deep to let that flick go. But at the same time, it might not be as high percentage. Flick, a forehand thrown outside away from the body of the handler. It's why you see, you know, so many young players in basketball that can make a 25 foot three, but they can't make that 12 foot bank shot. You know, they don't practice the mid range game as much as they practice the deep game. Well, Alex Duffel just dropped one. That's going to be a big burden against Seattle Mixed as this game goes to halftime. James Haran gets the last point of the half after that huge drop by Duffel. So Dragon Thrust trying to win their second straight national championship with an 8-4 lead at halftime here in Frisco. Can't give Dragon Thrust those easy mistakes. It's one thing to play 
in a wild fashion. It's another thing to make these unforced errors on soft throws. And Seattle mixed. Really in trouble as they face halftime, the 12 seed that has made it all the way to this final game. And an early lead for Dragon Thrust of 8-4 as Minneapolis tries to get back into the championship picture. They'll visit with the head coach of Dragon Thrust, Jake Henderson. And coach, everything we heard about Seattle, their wild style, taking some unnecessary chances, but they really made a couple of errors that helped your team out in the first half. Yep, uh, we'll attribute those to our pressure deep. Well, how would you grade your team's performance in that first half? Uh, we're playing really well. Uh, smart with the disc, we made, taking a few chances that I wasn't super fond of, uh, but we are, we are playing really well and we're putting the pressure on defensively. Ryan Schoenrock making plays on both sides of the disc. What have you seen from him this tournament? You know, he's battling a, a wrist injury and, and he's just a, a fighter. Uh, yesterday around the hotel room, I, uh, he was walking around with his shirt off and he's got scars all over his body from laying out. So uh, he's a fighter. And you said it was questionable. He might have not even played because of that wrist injury, but clearly he's doing all right. He's doing okay. Thoughts for the second half. How do you guys close out another title? Hey, it's never over. So uh, that's gonna be the message at half is we got to fight every step of the way. It's not over. Coach, good luck. Hey, thank you. Yeah, we learned that yesterday in the second half from those men's semifinals that these games aren't over. Seemingly, though, Dragon Thrust in control. An 8-4 lead over Seattle Mixed halftime in this Mixed Championship game. The 2014 USA Ultimate Championships are brought to you by Discraft Ultrastar, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Ask your retailer today about Discraft Ultrastar. The Triple Crown Tour, America's most competitive and prestigious series of ultimate tournaments. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body of the sport of ultimate in the United States. To learn more about USA Ultimate or to find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. Back here in Frisco, Texas in this mixed final. It's an 8-4 lead for Dragon Thrust over Seattle mixed. And Dragon Thrust looking very sharp in this first half. Yeah, four out of five taking care of business on break chances. Seattle unable to break Minneapolis, but the mixed team from the Pacific Northwest had chances. They were 0 for 4 on break chances. And that's really the difference in the game. Dragon Thrust capitalizing on Seattle's mistakes and not exactly the same story the other way around. And an 8-4 advantage for Dragon Thrust trying to win their second straight national championship. And as we look ahead to this second half, how could Seattle change things? Well, they need to stop making mistakes and they need to capitalize on their opportunities. We're going to talk to uh, Jamie Arambula, who's basically, for all intents and purposes, the coach of this team, even though he's not listed as such. But uh, and we'll ask him what he thinks. Jamie Arambula, who has had quite a history of his own in the sport of ultimate, now leading the way here for this Seattle mixed team. And Jamie, in this first half, some some really some unforced stairs that kind of come back to haunt you guys. How can you avoid those in the second half and tighten things up? Uh, wh what we talked about is getting back to the basics of field position. We're trying to get to a certain, the high side of the field. Um, I think that happens with pump fakes, aggressive pump fakes. They know we want to huck it. Um, and so if we can pump fake and pivot and manipulate the mark, I think you can do a better job of getting it centered and back to the high side for the attack. Jamie, I know you've, you've been through a lot in Ultimate. You've seen <laughs> comebacks bigger than this, so you know it's <laughs> not over. But just tell me, wh what has it been like being a part of this team this weekend as things have come together? Uh, it, for me, it's hard because I come from a, a history of very structured Ultimate. Um, and when, when the X's and O's fail on this particular team, we're actually better when we go to street ball style um, mini 3v3 style. So um, th the difference in this team is that when that when strategy breaks down, this team's chemistry rises up, and um, you might see a little bit more of that in this half as uh, as we get more comfortable with 
the surroundings, these new fami uh, unfamiliar surroundings. Do you say anything to a guy like Mark Burton, clearly a good player, about being chilly after a turnover? Or are you totally cool with him just unleashing those throws and letting them fly? Um, I th it's a <laughs> it is a fine line. Yeah. Um, I tell him I want him to cut. I want him to let him fly. Um, I tell him put him flat and uh, let our uh, speed and athleticism pull him down. So just keeping him flat so there's not. Uh, less uh, room for error on those hucks. All right, Jamie, good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. Jamie Arambula for Seattle. Mixed a little waved as well as we look at how the first half broke down. And hey, I like Seattle style. Griffin rip it. Who cares? Yeah, well, it's fun. It's a style I love to play too. Improvisational style. And early at work, good uh, footwork near the end zone goal line to get on the board first. But then Dragon Thrust able to go on a three-zip run led by Lean and Braun and Drescher and Schoenrock. That was Hamish knocking it down. Burton looking quickly deep and able to connect with his target despite Mike Clark's deflection. A couple more Seattle mixed highlights. Their big deep threat, Bill Paul, six foot five, uh, or rather 5'10", but able to come down with that disc. But James Ron has just been the biggest man on the field so far. Lean found him deep a couple of times, using the break side of the field and timing their cuts well. And this is what you get when you have a team like Minneapolis Dragon Thrust. They've practiced together for a long time. Each player knows what his or her teammate can do on the field, and they play with a great chemistry, and that's why they're seven points away from another national title. James Ron had three goals in that first half, a couple for Show and Rock as well. Bill Paul had three goals for Seattle Mixed. He also had an assist on the other one, so he's been very busy, as has Mark Burton. But both of these teams trying to move toward the national championship. Dragon Thrust has been there before. They won it last year. The Seattle Mixed trying to win for the first time, really their first foray onto this national stage. We've seen it happen before, Wayne. We've seen first year mixed teams come out of nowhere and win national titles. I think it's next to impossible to do in the men's division, but you know, in the men's side of things, Pittsburgh Temper, a, a brand new team this year, and they played well, won a couple of games on Thursday. Their goal was making it to pro flight. They fell short of that. But in terms of you know making it to pro flight, that's a goal that a lot of teams these days now come into nationals with in the mixed division all the four semi-finalists clinch a berth in pro flight so you have dragon thrust seattle mix clx and wild card and then you know, the quarterfinal losers and the pre-quarters losers all have a chance to play into that pro flight and the four teams joining the semi-finalists in the 2015 pro flight in the mixed side blackbird San Francisco, Mischief also from San Francisco. Columbus is Santa Maria. And they're gonna get better as they gain some club experience and also Atlanta Bucket. I'm curious to see whether Dylan Tennell still continues to play for that mixed team, whether he calls it quits after a long career or whether perhaps he decides to give the open round one more go around. Longtime chain lightning superstar. Second half begins with Dragon Thrust receiving the pull. Right away, this is a must-stop situation for Seattle Mixed. The pull waves out of bounds. The wind picking up a little bit. So Dragon Thrust will take it from the brick mark. And Dave Klink will do the honors to begin this second half. Klink's going deep right away. Beautiful throw. And Dragon Thrust gets a point right away. James Haran runs down his fourth goal. It's one thing to watch James Haran on tape like Seattle Mix did, but having never gone against him before, they're just learning about how dynamic of a target he is. For a guy his size, he's quicker than he looks. And he's got great field sense. You know, he created separation after that disc was in the air. And a nice throw from Klink, recognizing that Perron had position, had the angle. Let's go! Let's go, he just flat out outran Drew 
Brad Hauser. And growing from the middle third of the field to the near side third of the field with a little angle on the disc. Very, very hard to throw pucks straight down the field overhead. You sort of want to separate the field into thirds, and if your handler's in one third, you want the huck to be caught in another third of the field. And here's the pro flight qualifiers for 2015. San Francisco Polar Bears, the number one seed overall, did not make it out of three quarters and could not battle their way through the backdoor bracket. Thrust! So Dragon Thrust, Thrust, Seattle Mix, CLX, Wild Card. Thrust! The two San Francisco teams, not Polar Bears. And Santa Maria Thrust! and Bucket. Thrust! Now Seattle Mixed will have the possession for the first time in the second half, but down by five. Biggest lead for Dragon Thrust. Johnson looking to whip it downfield. Lucy Williams, rather Grace Noah looking at no, I had it right the first time. Lucy Williams. There's Drew Johnson. Slips it out to the side. Takes a spill after that. It just oh, briefly man. stops play. Ayi Fong now with possession for Seattle Mix. Trying to get back in this one. Saw so the men's semifinal last night. A 9 4 deficit disappear. Can be done even in these final games. A oh, great handler defense. Some contact there at the end of the play as Drew Johnson went down. It was Claire Oakley just giving Johnson fits. Maybe she fouled her, but that was still tremendous handler D. And you know, it's so tough to defend squirrely handlers. Observers ruling as you see the spirit of the game in action. Yeah, clear. Yeah, clear. Oakley with a good defense on Drew Johnson and will stand. So Dragon Thrust gets it back. Yeah, it looks like they settled that without the observers. Johnson sort of realized, yeah, yeah, I got hit, but I was hit after you got the disc. And Dragon Thrust goes deep again. This is how they score their first goal of the half. It's how they score their second. And fittingly, it's Claire Oakley who gets credit for the score. One of the gals on Dragon Thrust that we don't talk about as much, but that point belonged to Oakley. Bookends for Oakley as she burns Johnson deep. It's a good deep cut, but her defense on Johnson, who is just doing everything she could to shake her for a simple dump, typically thought of as an easy reset, but when you make teams struggle to get those resets, that's when you know you're in a groove defensively. Spirit of the game here in Ultimate. Highly competitive play and courage, but never at the expense of mutual respect among competitors. We've seen that today and throughout this tournament, throughout this weekend, such as that, which with that foul called against Claire Oakley. Now what we have is a big lead for Dragon Thrust. Biggest of the day. They've scored the first two points coming out of halftime. It's a three nothing run. Seattle Mix promised to be a little bit more wild in the second half. Haven't really had a chance to let it go just yet. As the pole is caught by Phil Pohl. And Phil Paul's gonna send it downfield. And there's a turnover, and that's where that style kind of bites the Yeah, for you know, you can ride the wave as Seattle has done for quite a while. But when it comes down to it, Dragon Thrust system is basically summarily dismantling Seattle right now. Although Dragon Thrust has scored every point in the half on deep throws. They tried for one there. As Jacob Lean went downfield. Lean stumbled, maybe a little contact, but no call. A slight misread. 
Glad Jacob Lean is all right. He looked a little uh, awkward landing there. Cole Johnson puts it in play for Mixed and Burton sends it deep again. Looking for Deborah Barker Lee. And it's out of bounds. It was actually Phil Paul who ended up being closest to it as Barker Lee kind of drifted with the disc. Seattle right now is starting to get into the mode of huck and hope. And that's not a, a typically a recipe for success. Even though it's fun. <laughs> Dragon Thrust has the recipe for success down. Well done. And they've got an 11-4 lead after that great catch by Jess Haller. Minneapolis starting to taste it. Now four points away. Great pivot and release on this throw here. Sarah Anzio, a good step out. A little bit of an air bounce just to guarantee that it would have some float to it. She knew she had plenty of room to work with in the back of the end zone, and Jess Holler makes the play. Now as far as national championships in the mixed level, only two teams have ever won it twice, Blackbird in 11 and 12, and the Tahoe Donner Party had a couple of championships back in the past. No other teams have won it more than once. Dragon Thrust trying to join that small list. You know, there's, there's never been a mixed team, Wayne, that won the national championship, won the world championship, and then won the next national title. And Dragon Thrust on the verge of history. Jay Drescher on the pull from Dragon Thrust. What are these guys gonna do with all these gold medals? <laughs> What would you do with it? Show them off prominently. Wear them every day at Mr. T. That'd be a good look for me, don't you think? I think so. A little bling on the voice of Ultimate. It wouldn't hurt. Nice defense. And Dragon Thrust right back at it. Sarah Mextra. Now Emily Regan sends it back. Dragon Thrust has controlled the second half. They've scored all three goals. And they called a timeout here. They set up their offensive strategy with their defensive line on the field. Big lead for Dragon Thrust on the verge of their second straight national championship. Let's run Regan in the back. As they huddle up here after a timeout. Regan in the back. You're in the three spot. I'll go break side, and then you're going deep, okay? So Dragon Thrust undefeated in this tournament. I want, I don't want that. And yesterday over the Chad Larson experience, really their toughest game was the quarterfinal matchup against Blackbird. 14-13 win there as we take a look at the bracket to this point, at least from the semifinals on. Dragon Press knocking off CLX yesterday. And Seattle mixed, holding off Boston wild card. Tough day in the women's and mixed division for Boston yesterday. Brood squad lost on the women's side. The Boston Ironside did make it to the men's final. We'll see them later. Against good old Denver Johnny Bravo, another team that's had a great year. Dragon Thrust will tap it back in with a seven goal lead. And Jay Drescher looking for the end zone. On a diving attempt, Regan couldn't grab it. And it turns back to Seattle. Left 
Lefty swing pass up the field. Now Burton sends it back. Seattle Mix known to take chances. They've certainly taken them today. El Salam's got it now. Just hasn't worked today. Five straight wins in this tournament for Seattle Mixed. After their pool play opening loss to the San Francisco Polar Bears. Although it turned out to not be so good of a tournament for them after that initial win. Curious to see if Khalif El Salam can take over a point here. He's had a few touches. Ryan Schoenrock is making things really difficult for him defensively. Collision there as Nicholas Dare went down. McCain ran into him. Dare was kind of upset that McCain charged into him so hard. Now they talk about it. McCain backs off a bit and Dare taps it back in. A lefty flick from Nicholas Dare. And it's too high. Intended downfield for Hauser. It seemed like Hauser kind of gave up on it a little bit, didn't run through the disc. But it turns back over quickly to Seattle anyway. Mark Burton picks it up. Ooh, again, Dare too high, but that one is chased down by Hauser. Now look at end zone, and it's caught. Seattle back on the board, as the catch was made by Roberta Abbott. They keep saying when the X's and O's break down, that's when they're most comfortable. This is certainly not how they drew it up, right through El Salam's hands, but fortunately there to make the play was Klein. And then just a nice put to open space for Deborah Barker Lee. Roberta Abbott getting that goal at the end for Seattle. Her first goal. Out in front of Andrea Kremrine as Mix gets their first shot in the second half. They fell behind after a 4 0 run by Dragon Thrust from the end of the first half to the beginning of the second. Seattle happy to get back on the board, down six still though. Getting quite a comeback in the second half. First to 15, becomes the national champion. Already a good crowd today, already a festive crowd here in Frisco, Texas. You, you plan a weekend, a tournament like this, so much goes into the preparations and you know, realistically, the weather is a crapshoot. And both USA Ultimate and all the spectators have gotten really fortunate that the weather has been so spectacular these past few days. Yeah, just a picture perfect weekend here in Frisco. Tron gets it out to Clark. Clark's been quiet today after a huge semifinal yesterday. Dragon Crest hasn't really needed a big day from him. James Braun has stepped up, looking for a point here and a sliding catch. Secures it for Dragon Crest. Patty King puts Minneapolis back up by seven. We talked about the Austin lean to James Braun connection before. Patty King, the third captain of Minneapolis Dragon Thrust. One of their female leaders. Only five foot five, 27 years old from St. Paul. Showing off her athleticism and ability to secure the score. Great throw by Talis Boyd. Now Dragon Press back to their biggest lead of seven. Three points from their second straight national title. Mm -hmm. 
impressive performance by Dragon Thrust today. And we look ahead to next year. I mean, what else can Dragon Thrust accomplish? I guess no mixed team has ever won three in a row, right? No mixed team's ever won three. This team will be back. I promise you that. Not their best effort today in this championship game as they give and go up the field. So in order to beat Dragon Thrust, you need to be at your absolute best or they need to just have a really, really bad day. Because their B minus game is still really, really super solid. I think that's what's made them so consistent over the past 12 months. Now they've had a few occasional losses. They've learned from them. But for the most part, they're able to win when they're not playing their absolute best. And they also pressure you defensively to the point where it's hard to be at your best because you typically haven't seen that type of defensive pressure in the mixed environment the way Dragon Thrust brings it. See the pickup style of Seattle mixed, especially on this possession, but it's taken away there. Another big D. Jess Haller knocking that one out. The catch on the run. And now a chance to go deep. Taken away. Mark Burton intercepted it. Now Seattle just running up field. Passing the disc as they go along. is more of the Seattle style than what you've seen all day. Well, that toe, throw to the end zone too far for Joel Barker. Yeah, that might have been their best possession of the game in terms of working it up the field patiently. I think when they're feeling the way they want, that's the style they like to play. That quick give and go up tempo. Jamie Arambula barking out instructions to try to keep his team in it. Down by seven, but until that last goal is scored, there's always a chance. And a turnover here that's going to put Seattle right in the red zone, and they get a quick point. Cameron Bailey makes it a 12 6 contest. Way to capitalize quickly off the turn that time. Cameron Bailey making the quick cut. Fans chanting for Idaho. That's the nickname of the guy we talked to at halftime, Jamie Arambula, who's basically the captain of the Sockeye defensive line for two championship seasons, 2005, 2000, uh, 2006, 2007. Jimmy Arambula's played and coached ultimate all around the world. He has helped coach developmental ultimate Colombia, Mexico, and Russia. Part of the Rise Up program. He and Ben Wiggins, very good friends. Racket Press begins this possession, eating three goals. National champions. It's Mike Clark. Now Clink scoops it ahead into the red zone immediately. Mextra right on the edge of the goal line, flips it in. And there's Mike Clark with his first goal of the game. The pull dragon thrust within two. Gradually, Seattle mixed has just become you know, demoralized by the Dragon Thrust efficiency. In 
the red zone in the first half. Dragon Thrust was seven for seven, taking care of business. And first red zone goal since halftime. The more reliance on the Huck this half. Fans want to see a Robbie led the game. Is he going to come in? Told me before the game he might play a point or two. Not going to play this one. He's jogging off the field, waving to the crowd. He appreciates it. Keep up that good team. Keep up that good team, Dragon. Dragon dressed on the line, ready for the pull. A 13 6 lead. Everything has come up just the way they've wanted it. You go back to their quarterfinal matchup against Blackbird. Really the only challenge they've had. Yeah, that, was a universe, tournament. that was a universe point game. 50-50 Huck, Braun versus Mac Taylor. Braun made the big play for Minneapolis. Pulled just by narrowly Dresher. out of bounds. Yeah, just out of bounds in the end zone. So Seattle will get to bring it up to the brick mark and begin this possession. Needing a lot of stops and scores, down by seven with this game to 15. Kick call downfield. Chance for Seattle Knicks to reset. Still both of their timeouts remaining in this second half. Dragon Crest is one. Push pass to the center and Phil Paul with the catch, but another stoppage. Yarambula stretching out the sideline. Maybe he is getting ready to come in. Fans would like to see it. Nice D there as Alicia Carr interrupted the drive for Seattle. So Dragon Thrust able to pick it up with their defensive line out there. Jacob Lean, as he swings it out way too far, but Schoenrock able to track it down. Now Jay Drescher has it go through his hands. A rare mistake by Drescher. Seattle mixed back on offense. And Drescher tried to intercept that one, doesn't matter. As Dragon Press will get it anyway, although if Drescher had picked it, might have had a few more yards in front. A change of possession anyway. Oh, great post D. The strong side handler spot. Phil Paul. Mark Burton starts the possession for Seattle Mixed. A leaping grab on the side by Kai Fong. They go up top. And a great catch by Mark Burton. Seattle mixed madness. The scuba and Drescher thought he had the D, but Burton makes the play. Heck of a catch by Burton. Not the smoothest of scubers you'll ever see, but it worked out. I like that female hammer, hey, let's go. That's a, a scuba you probably wouldn't see in many because it was probably too long, too long for the field. Seattle will pull it back to Dragon Thrust. Again, Dragon Thrust needing just two points to become national champions once again. And Idaho, Jamie Arambula is going to play this point. Number 44 in white on the line for Seattle. Arambula calls his own number. This crowd has been chatting for him. He's sprinting down. He's the first one down, and he'll guard lean on the mark. He's got fresh legs, and there he is. In the face of Austin Lee. Always bouncing around the balls of his feet. He won a mixed championship in 2001 with the team Trigger Happy on a very windy day in Sarasota in the midst of Hurricane Michelle. 
They had a lot of strong throwers, though, won a mixed title. Played for Condors and Sockeye. Knocked that one away from Patty King, but a foul was called. Arabula cops to it. Or no, and the wave is going to go the other way. So Arambula helps Seattle get the disc. Arambula handling here as he swings it to the middle. Complete to El Salah. Upfield for Drew Johnson. Now El Salam again. Sends it back to Henry Fong. Arambula has been a bit of a spark on this point for Seattle. Into the red zone now. Brad Hauser. Hand off to El Salam. Seattle looking for that toss into the end zone. This play stops for the moment. Bell Salam trying to get Seattle back on the board. Now Abbott. The lefty flick too high for Arambula. And it falls to the ground incomplete. Austin Lean on the deep flick. Hucking it. And caught. Oh my. Incredibly by Anna Hetler. Nobody expected to see Hetler come down with that one with El Salam closing in. But El Salam just missed time, just jumped a tad, and Hetler waited for it. Anna Hetler should frame this photo right about now. Seems like El Salam kind of alligator armed it at the end. Didn't want to make contact with Hetler. Dragon thrust right on the brink of a championship. On, How about that? So this Minneapolis team that has had great continuity on the roster and you know, picked up Robin Fennig Wiseman for Worlds. She was a huge female in their world championship. He was playing with Heist in the women's side. Played for Dragon Thrust in the past, now on the women's side with Heist, but it's been a very impressive run, obviously. This team founded in 2009. They made the semis in 2010 and 2012. Finally got to the finals and won it last year, and then they have basically taking care of business and you know, Jake Anderson says well, when we play our game we're really tough to beat they're good they know they're good not so much history for the Seattle mixed team but building their history here at this tournament you mentioned on next year they've got already a lot of commitments yes they do continue to build that new tradition Be their final possession here as two Dragon Thrust players run into each other. Peterson and Mextra have collided. Now Lucy Williams with possession in the red zone for Seattle. Intercepted. Jacob Lean picked it off and immediately called a timeout. As Dragon Thrust begins a possession that could lead them to their second straight championship, they use their final timeout of this half. They're on the verge of adding to their already 
Impressive trophy case. Fourteen seven lead for Dragon Thrust as we take a look at our Discraft Ultra Star play of the game. This beautiful throw from Talis Boyd to a sliding Patty King in the end zone. Well, it's been the Dragon Thrust females that have really been difference makers in this game. Oakley, the phenomenal bookended point when she got the D on the handler and then went deep for the score. Anna Hetler, Patty King, Sarah Mextroff, who's typically the star, has had a, a relatively quiet game for her standards. That's the story of this team, just different people stepping up in big games. And Seattle just has not been good enough when they've had chances. The Seattle mixed team, 5 for 12 in the red zone, 0 for 5 on break chances. Possession doesn't start very well for Jacob Lee. Jacob Lee just turfed it. Now Seattle with a chance to score again. Mark Putin. Oh, and Lee Down gets it Jacob back. Jacob Lee once again. Diving in front. Although Phil Paul thinks there was a foul. You see Lee saying, I got there. I think he did. No foul. No foul. No foul. No foul. Seattle will have it right on the goal 20. line. 20. <laughs> Minneapolis will take it from the goal line, so they do rule that Jacob Lee Here's was clean there, and Sarah Mextroth with a catch off the huck. To put Minneapolis in position. Dragon Thrust, national champions in 2013, trying to win it again. But Mike Peterson unable to catch up with that one, and now Seattle goes deep, too far. Jay Drescher will track it down after that diving attempt by Mark Burton. Nice bid, leaving it all on the field. Not quite in sync. Peterson from the center, tosses it out. Now Sarah Mextraw finds Drescher with the dive. Drescher goes deep. And nothing there, although certainly a chance for Alicia Carr. This one could come back to Drescher. There, Carr could have made that. Server ruling, it was a foul. Wait, they're still slipping. Thresher will have a chance to get near midfield. Dragon thrust a point away from victory. Mike Peterson now slings it upfield, looking for that last point. Can Drescher keep it in bounds, looking for the greatest to do so. And Drescher wants a foul as he was trying to make that play happen. Now he's saying, forget it. Drescher trying to make the greatest happen, and instead... I mean, you could make an argument that he's trying to throw that back in bounds, and his arm was hit on the throw. Uh, you know, this would have been such a superhuman way for this game to end. And it's unlikely someone would have been there, but a tremendous athletic effort by Drescher. And, you know, if this was 14-13, I think he stands by that call. Extra is in the neighborhood. That's called having feel. That was a really great effort by Drescher. We've seen him. You don't want to make that argument, though, at 14-7. What a catch. As Cameron Bailey made that grab and lunged all the way to the end zone. Well, 
one thing Seattle's done in this second half. They have taken off any handcuffs they might have had early. They've stretched the field. They've really played this jailbreak style. Which is fun to watch. I hope this team stays together. I hope they keep this core together, maybe add a couple others. And I hope they show up to the U.S. Open next July 4th weekend and prove that this wasn't a fluke and it wasn't a lightning in a bottle. Because they, they have a lot of talent and they do have a very unique style. And I think they could become a fan favorite type team because of the way they play. Sort of that reckless abandon, quick movement. El Salam will pull for Seattle. He's dragging thrust once again, needing that last point. That was an overthrow, but it ends up going to Glader. Austin Lean sends it to the end zone, but it's deflected and knocked away. Seattle's still alive. Here we go, Clark. Go, don't get distracted, Cole. Evan Klein will start this possession for Seattle Mixed. Out hand, out hand. Go, hand. Go, go, hand. Go, hand. Now El Salam has Mixed. Tries to set up another score and stay in this game. Down 14 to 8. was called it's never over till it's over especially in this sport we've seen some craziness just the last 24 hours the first look for every Seattle mixed handler is deep <laughs> and you see people trying to make cuts downfield some good downfield D on this possession from Dragon Thrust There's the deep cut. And a great catch along the sideline by Dominic Cavallaro. His first goal today. And Seattle pulls to within 14-9. Cavallaro just 22. Washington State born and bred. Six foot two. We're able to straddle the stay in bounds on the sideline. It's the first break of the game for Seattle Mixed. That's the soft cap horn, which has no use in this game with Dragon Thrust already on the verge of 15. It does take you 20 minutes to the hard cap. If Seattle Mix keeps this going for a while, could come into play. They need a big run to continue. They've scored the last couple of goals. Now a 14-9 contest. We've really seen Seattle as they've gotten to the brink of elimination. Loosen up. Defense has been more aggressive and their offense had that looser style that they like to play. Jay Drescher back to James Wong. I think McCain thought about it, now back to Haran. And Thress looking downfield. They've had some deep oh. passes connect, and now a turnover. Talis Boyd couldn't handle a low throw. Khalif El Salam. Seattle Mix trying to score their third straight point. Back to El Salam. 
Opening there as a Dragon Press player went down. Seattle didn't take advantage. Soft passes to keep it conservative and get it down to the red zone. Could use a dump swing here. Cogburn throws it along the sideline and Drescher knocks it away. Too much traffic. Forced that up line. Needed to recognize that everybody was on this near third of the field. One dump and one swing, and they would have had the entire wide open side of the field to attack. Something probably easy to see when you're watching the film or watching from our perspective than when you're handling on the cusp of the end zone. Now possession for Dragon Thrust after that D by Drescher. Jake McCain will start it off. 70 yards to glory for Minneapolis. And Drescher's trying to get them all right here. And there it is to Talis Boyd, who finishes off the play to Mextra. And Minneapolis Dragon Thrust, national champions for the second straight year. Arguably the best run we've ever seen in the mixed division with back-to-back -back national titles and a world championship in between the two. Never been done before. Congratulations to their captains, Austin Lean, James Ron, Patty King, the coach Jake Henderson, and everybody. Seattle mixed, laying out to the finish, but Dragon Thrust was a better team today. They were a better team during the regular season. And they're the best team in the mixed division again. Pressure with the deep toss to Talis Boyd. A short dump off to Mextroff in the end zone. And that's how Dragon Thrust caps their second straight national title. They've achieved the double peak. Italy in August, Frisco in October. Is this really getting called back? It seems to be. You gotta be kidding me. Well, it was I, I, I guess I, I, I take back all those nice things <laughs> I said. That's just kind of strange that they'll call it back at this point. This is like the uh, women's final at Worlds when Riot thought they had won, but they hadn't won yet. I think Fury thought that Riot had won. Okay. Maybe they didn't take a good picture the first time. Next drop was standing there all alone and tap it back in and Boyd finishes it off upon, once again. Upon further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. When they replay this, they should just take away this last part and call it as it was when we did it the first time. But a 15-9 win for Dragon Thrust, national champions of the mixed division and consecutive national titles. A great run, certainly, as Dragon Thrust comes here to Frisco and reclaims the national title. They had a fun season. They also won the U.S. Open on their home turf just outside of Minneapolis in the Twin City region. The Polar Bears in that final. You know, Dragon Twist was tested a, a, truly a couple times in this tournament. The quarterfinals, Universe Point against Blackbird, and then in the semis yesterday. Dragon led the half over CLX 8-6. And then CLX ran off three straight to take a 9-8 lead. And at that point, Minneapolis took control the rest of the way. Great effort by Seattle mixed today, but it's Dragon Crest that once again stands alone on top.
15-9 win today. That's Martha Harris being carried off on the shoulders of her teammate. Austin lead. See Pat Niles there with the crutches. As Dragon Crest approaches their fans that have come here to support them and about to be celebrating another gold medal. Jake Henderson, congratulations. Hey, thanks. Jake, how do you guys get this one done? What was the key to coming through this weekend and completing the double peak? Uh, I don't know. I think I think we just got a gritty team. Uh, we did not have an easy game, not a single game this tournament, and uh, we just fought every point. It was pr pretty awesome. Jake, you probably don't know this, but there's not a mixed team in history that's won two national championships back-to-back -back and a world championship in between the two. When you reflect upon these last 12 months, what comes to mind? Uh, it's It's been an incredible ride. And uh, these guys and gals on, on Dragon Thrust, um, we have a couple that aren't with us because uh, they've moved away, but uh, we, have, we have an awesome team. And it's truly a team, and they're super, super gritty, and, th and they work really hard in the off season, and then we bring it on game day. Are you like Nick Saban, where you're gonna start tomorrow to start preparing for the 2015 championship? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> no team's ever won three consecutive mixed titles. Do you, I mean, will you talk about that? Do you think that'll be a goal for this team? Well, that'll be a that'll be a conversation in uh, November or somewhere, December, January. Uh, we need a little time to rest. Cool. Go enjoy it, Jake. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Dragon Thrust with the national championship for the second straight year. They win it 15-9 today over Seattle Mixed trifecta of a 2013 national championship 2014 world and another world national championship here as well for evan leffler i'm wayne randazzo we say so long from dr pink field in frisco texas minneapolis dragon crest a 15-9 win over seattle mix to watch this entire game on replay log on to watch espn.com or download the watch espn app we thank you for watching this has been a presentation of espn